In this episode, we will look at the role of another lady, Rabab bint Imra al Qais. The journey to Karbala for Lady Rabab was not easy. She was traveling with Ali Azhar, who was at the time just one month old, when they left Medina and Sukaina was also very young. Indeed, the day of Ashura was also a real test for her. On one side, she faced the fear of losing a loving husband who had been left alone after his companions had been brutally killed. And on the other side, she faced the heartbreaking sight of her little girl being extremely thirsty and in sorrow over losing her uncle Abbas. Then there was also her baby boy who showed his dry tongue to her as a desperate sign that he is dying of thirst. This helplessness was unbearable for Lady Rabab to see in her loved ones. Yazid's forces had decided that no matter what, they would not allow Imam Hussein and his companions to retrieve water from the river Euphrates. So it left Lady Rabab with no option but to bring Ali Azhar to the battlefield. Yazid's army set new standards of barbarism on that day after killing this innocent baby. Yazid's corrupt practices were sabotaging everything that Islam had brought. For instance, Prophet Muhammad categorically mentioned and instructed his army that it is the responsibility of every soldier to protect and not hurt women and children during any war. The Holy Prophet even instructed that prisoners of war should not be humiliated. But when we look at Karbala, the Umayyad leader Yazid ibn Mavia ibn Abu Sufyan did not only disobey the instructions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, but he set new precedents for brutality which is not even found in the age of ignorance. Despite all of this, if we think and put ourselves in the shoes of this mother, we may feel what kind of trauma she had been through. Such were the miseries of Lady Rubab. When she came to Karbala, she had a husband and beautiful children. But when she left, she was all alone. Some historians write that when Imam Hussein died, Lady Rabab spent a year in grief at Imam Hussein's grave. Moreover, when proposed to, she refused to remarry. She dedicated her remaining life to the grief of her family, and she was not the only one who dedicated her life in remembrance of those who died in Karbala. Imam Zain al Abidin and other ladies who survived Yazid's captivity never stopped mourning. This was the effect of Karbala. Those who survived, even though they physically were present at different cities and homes, their souls always remained back in Karbala. They always mourned the tragic day of Ashura and the oppression of Yazid and his forces. <laughs> 